So our next speaker is Ling Ling Chen from the Shanghai Institute of Biological Sciences, and she represents the latest generation of people that it actually served on her thesis defense committee when she was at the University of Connecticut, and they've remained friends since then. Her laboratory studies RNAs, and, and her, the goal is to identify new RNAs, and she's identified a number of very interesting non-protein RNAs, including, including circular RNAs that have been implicated in human disease, gene regulation, and uh, uh, embryonic stem cell function. So Ling Ling. Hi, everyone. Uh, can you hear me in the back? I'm totally thrilled <laughs> to have this great opportunity to participate in Professor Sidney Altman's symposium. Um, so I did my PhD with Gordon Carmichael at UConn Health Center. And in the early of 2009, I invited uh, uh, Sid to be my outside campus uh, thesis reviewer. I still remember that day Sid drove the car all the way to Farmington and stayed for over than two hours with the rest of other committee members and me in a small conference room. Um, I cannot recall how many questions I was asked, but the final <laughs> outcome was pleasant, and they let me pass, so thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> but today, uh, I feel, uh, I had a feeling like kind of private defense again in front of so many masters <laughs> in the room. Um, so anyway, so I also thank uh, my friend Donna and uh, uh, Ning. Okay. This one? Is this better? It's now better? Okay, sorry about that. Yeah. Sorry about this. Um, yeah, anyway, so, and then in the summer of 2009, uh, I uh, John Altman Library Reunion, and uh, this is a picture. Um, here is Sid, and this is me, and I believe this is Professor McLean. Um, it's my uh, luck to become one member of Professor uh, Sid Altman's research group. This is largely because of this guy, <laughs> uh, Li Yang, who did a postdoc with Sid from 2004 to 2006, and Li is my husband. <laughs> um, and also now uh, we have collaboration uh, on computational biology. All right, so today I'm going to talk about biogenesis and also a little bit of uh, functional application of uh, several London coding species we've been working with. So a while ago when I set up my lab in Shanghai, um, I really wanted to study with some uh, new RNAs to work with. So rather than looking at the polyadenylated RNA transcriptome, which are known to contain most of mRNAs and uh, uh, link RNAs transcribed from intergenital region, um, there is a very simple hypothesis that there are probably some new link RNAs that don't have poly tail, but yet would be identified. So we decided to look at the non-poly RNA transcriptome. The method is very straightforward. So uh, we collect the total RNAs, treat it with DNS1 to remove any possible uh, uh, DNA contamination, and we did this in uh, human ear cells, H9 land, and HeLa cells. Uh, but the key thing is we have to be very careful. So we do multiple rounds of all of DT selection, and we collect not only the poly ARN, but also uh, the non poly RNA. So for the non poly RNA part, we then treat multiple rounds of ribosome RNA depletion. Uh, and then we did a size selection to collect RNA longer than 200 nucleotides for RNA sequencing. On the right, showing you uh, examples of we have very uh, clean fractionation of the poly RNAs and non poly RNAs. Um, and we found uh, some stable non poly AR signals derived from both intron regions and uh, axon regions. And these RNA signals tend to be uh, two types of circular RNAs and also SNO RNA and the non encoding RNAs. So the first type of circular RNA that we found is called circular intronic RNAs derived from intron lyrids. Um, so if the intron uh, contains the uh, GU rich motif close to the fire prime splicing set and the U rich motif close to the brown pond set, now such intron lyrid uh, is resistant to debranching and forming uh, a class of uh, new RNA called CRNA. Showing you one example here, 
Uh, this is the gene called NK RD52. It's second in chunk can produce a circular RNA. Um, so on the denatured gel, we can tell that the circular RNA migrates much more slowly than its linear isoform. And when we treat the samples with RNs R, which is an enzyme can cut uh, or digest this linear RNA and the wet structure RNA, but it can preserve the circular RNA. Now we found uh, this treated sample and untreated sample, they still make this to the same position. So suggesting, although they um, derived from the intron but they does not, con uh, I mean, they do not contain the superlinear linear tail. Um, and we found some of such uh, circular RNAs can promote uh, polymers to transcription in cis with unknown mechanism. Okay, so the second group of uh, circular RNAs are more um, broadly um, detectable uh, in uh, metasons. And these RNAs are produced from backsplicing of exons. So this circular RNAs was originally uh, identified in over 25 years ago but only identified in a handful of cases. Uh, with the application of the non poly R sequencing, now uh, thousands of such circular RNAs can be identified in uh, metasomes from fruit fly to moths and to human. Um, several studies reveal that uh, circular RNAs can regulate gene expression by titrating microRNAs, affecting transcription, and also interfering with splicing. So uh, back splicing uh, ligates the downstream five prime splicing side to the upstream three prime splicing side. So the question is how the splicing can overcome this sterically unfavorable reaction. We and others have found that uh, the complementary sequences, most of them are ALU elements in human beings, uh, in the flanking introns of the circle are forming axons. Uh, they can form the double-strand RNA pairing. Therefore, they can um, bring the splicing cells close together to facilitate back splicing. However, the presence of such sequences um, are important, but they are not sufficient. Uh, and because circular RNA formation is regulated by the competition of the uh, double-strand RNA formation across or within the intron. For example, if the double-strand RNA forming uh, within the individual uh, intron, it will promote the canonical splicing. But if the uh, pairing occurs across the intron, it can um, promote axon circularization. For example, uh, here shows you if uh, these two axons can form circular RNA and they're flanking by uh, ALU elements, can form the pairing, you can see the circular RNA formation can be detected. Uh, here, if we change the ALU to the non-repetitive but can, um, complementary sequences. Again, they can strongly induce circular formation because now they become the fully complementary. However, if we introduce another um, uh, competition pair within this intron, now it can uh, completely block circular formation. So it is a very interesting uh, thing. Um, and also, uh, we found uh, over 50% of the um, expressed the gene can um, produce circular RNAs, and then can produce multiple circular RNAs from uh, uh, one single gene lockers. Uh, here shows you one example from the DNA methyl transferase 3B. Uh, we can detect multiple circular RNAs produced from this region, and some of the abundant ones can be verified by northern blotting. Um, so we think uh, the uh, weather distributed ALU elements and their competition can lead to a central circularization uh, in uh, human cells as well as in mouse. And indeed, such competition uh, um, can lead to the uh, back splicing set selection, either the five prime splicing set selection, proximal or distal, depends where the uh, dubstrand iron uh, formation occurs, or the three prime set selection. Uh, if the circular RNA containing multiple axons. Uh, in addition to the alternative back splicing site selection, we found all the four uh, basic types of alternative uh, kinetic splice site selection also occurs within the circular RNAs, including the cassette axons, intron rotation, uh, alternative splice site selection. So apparently, circular RNA biogenesis uh, is complex. So, now the question is how back splicing is linked to transcription, whether it occurs co-transcriptionally or post-transcriptionally. 
Um, to tackle this question, we studied the current processing using the FISU tagging of the national RNAs followed by RNA sequencing, which is also called FISU DRB seq So FISU uh, DRB seq has been uh, used to study uh, RNA polymers to uh, elongation. So basically, um, we treat the cells with the DRB, uh, which is uh, uh, inhibitor, can be reversely blocked for two transcription for three hours, and then we wash out the DRB to continue portal transcription. At the same time, we add the FOSU, which is analog of the uridine, to label um, the RNA for different time periods. And then we collect those national RNAs, we deplete the FOSU label the ribosomal RNA to increase informative mapping, and then we did RNA sequencing with or without RNA, uh, without SR treatment. So we have generally this set of data in P1 cells, which is human uh, embryonic uh, uh, carcinoma cell lamb, H9 cell, and H9 cell differentiation for brain neurons. So here shows you how we um, realize the backsplicing and splicing events for particular gene lockers. Mm -hmm. So here is a gene called BMPR2. It's second and third uh, axon. They can form circular RNA. So basically call the splicing uh, junction rates and the backsplicing junction rates. And the number of them represent the relative expression of circular RNA and the splice linear RNA. And at the steady state, we can tell that um, the expression of this circular RNA is comparable to the linear splice RNA. However, uh, in the national state, um, the expression of the circular RNA is much more slow, uh, lower compared to the canonical splicing. Um, yeah, at these lockers. So this to say the. Um, processing of circular RNA at the national level by the splicosome is very low. And it is also true on the global scale. So here we um, collect the total um, BSG rates and also the total upstream and downstream um, backsplicing junction of the exact same axons. So about less than percent of the axon can undergo uh, backsplicing. So splicosome doesn't really like to do backsplicing. And in addition, we found circular RNA processing largely occurs post the transcriptionally. Uh, she's here, uh, the transcription of the most uh, genes has terminated after 60 minutes of the transcription. Uh, and we found the splicing junction size of the kinetic splicing reached to a platform about two hours. However, um, the splicing junction size for the back splicing keep accumulating. The suggestion is largely occurs post the transcriptionally. The interesting thing is, although they occur post transcriptionally, but we found circular RNA producing genes tend to transcribe quickly. Uh, we found for uh, the nascent circular RNA producing genes, their transcription elongation rate is about 2.9 kb per minute. However, on average, for the non circular RNA genes, it's about 2.3 kb per minute. Uh, and we further very, uh, verified this observation by uh, Modulating, uh, modulating PAL2 elongation rates in cells. So in brief, if we uh, slow down PAL2 transcription, uh, we can see lower level of nascent circular RNA could be produced. And if we increase the PAL2 transcription, we see more circular RNA could be produced. So why this happen? Uh, one very attractive hypothesis is uh, this fast PAL2 uh, elongation uh, favors non-canonical RNA pairing of those complementary sequences across uh, axons, therefore for city back, uh, back splicing. And we also found circular RNA has very long half-life. Um, some of the uh, circular RNAs at the steady state is mainly due to their accumulation. And this is particularly true uh, in cells have very slow division rate, for example in neurons. So it, when we differentiate the human ear cells to fibro neuron, we found uh, both the number and the expression level of circular RNAs are significantly increased at a steady state. It also, uh, it tend, and then when we, uh, we did those um, uh, nascent RNA sequencing, we found uh, such genes tend to be transcribed quickly in neurons. And uh, uh, when we compare the nascent level of the circular RNA expression, uh, we found at the nascent level, uh, some circular RNA uh, produce faster or slower, you know, we compare the two cell lines, but 
at the uh, statistic level, almost all circuit RNA are highly expressed in neurons. So this again suggests uh, circuit RNA that are abundant at the statistic level uh, in neurons transcribe quickly and uh, accumulate. So here's the summary of the circuit RNAs. Um, so by nonpolar RNA sequencing, we found the circuit RNA produced from uh, intron larids also identified the circuit RNAs produced from backsplicing of axons. So for those backsplicing circuit RNAs, we found their biogenesis depends on um, the flanking complementary sequences, and the competition of our pairing is to alternative circularization. And circuit RNA production is very slow endogenously and largely occurs post-transcriptionally. Uh, we also found that circuit RNA that are bonding at a static level tend to be transcribed quickly and accumulate. And of course, there are many questions remain to be answered. So, uh, for example, what RNA binding proteins are associated with their biogenesis, and how are they uh, ultimately degraded? How are they structured? And what proteins they are associated for any potential functions? So, my lab now focuses on some of these topics to further address circular RNAs. Um, now I'm going to switch my talk to the snow RNA related lung encoding RNAs. I'm going to talk about the snow RNA and the lung encoding RNA and spars. Um, so the non-poly RNA sequencing has also allowed us to identify the snow RNA and the intron derived lung encoding RNAs, we call them snow link RNAs. So there are two types of snow RNA, the box CD and the box HACA, which are defined by their unique structure motif. Um, and uh, those snow RNAs, they can uh, act as uh, get RNAs that are complementary to target sequences to direct either ribosome methylation or pseudo-urethylation. Lot, uh, lots of them happen on ribosome RNAs. Um, as we know that introns are your degree of splicing, but if one intron contains two snow RNA genes now during splicing, the assembly of the snow RNA P complex at both ends can protect the internal intronic RNA sequences from degradation, leading to the formation of the snow RNA P capsule and encoding RNAs. And we found four different types of snow link RNA in the cell. Either the snow link RNA ended by both CD snow RNA or HAC snow RNA, or one side is CD, another side is HACA. Um, so we found about 20 such uh, snow link RNAs in cells. But the one striking observation is the genomic uh, region encoding the most abundant snow link RNAs in human embryonic stem cells is associated with Prader-Willi syndrome. So PWS is a uh, genetic uh, neuroelemental, uh, well, PWS is a neuron developmental genetic disorder that has been mapped to the chromosome, chromosome uh, the paternal chromosome of uh, 15Q11, Q13. Um, and this region is the genomic imprinting lockers. Um, so up to about 70% of the, uh, of the PWS patients, they contain um, the several megabase deletion, including the SNRPN and its downstream non-coding region. Um, there are four reported cases uh, of the Prader-Willi syndrome individuals, and they contain those um, overlapping micro deletions that map to the uh, untranslated region of the SNP N gene. So therefore, the depletion of this non-coding region of the SNP N <coughs> has been thought as the primary cause of the disease. So previously, this region has annotated with uh, 29 copies of box CD SNP RNA. However, those SNP RNAs, they are orphans. Nobody knows what they are doing in cells. So how these SNP RNAs involve the disease is unknown. And we found five very abundant snow link RNAs just derived from these lockers in human cells, and their expression is very, very high. <coughs> and such snow link RNAs, they uh, can form uh, nuclear accumulation close to their sets of transcription, and they, uh, they interact with splicing factor FOX2. Um, so we think the missing expression of this snow link RNA may contribute to the development of the disease. Well, the thing is, since Snow link RNAs are so striking. Are there additional snow RNA related lung encoding RNA in cells? We then perform the fibrillary RNA immunoprecipitation followed by RNA sequencing. So, fibrillary is one of the four key protein um, components of the snow RNP uh, complex. And here shows our fibrillary rib sequence data. 
Uh, so all the five snow linkhorn from the PWS region can be uh, successfully and specifically put down. And then uh, we look at the data, we found about 20 snow RNA related lung lung code RNAs. And among these snow RNA related link RNAs, we found uh, yet another new type of link RNAs. We call it SPAR, which is five prime snow RNA ended, three prime polyadenylated. And this picture um, shows how the SPAR from the Prader-Willi syndrome region uh, look like in the <coughs> nucleus. Um, so the striking thing is the genomic region encoding two spars in stem cells, again, is associated with the PWS. Um, so the first spar, we call spar one, it's just located to the downstream of SNP engine, all right, and upstream of SNP link RNA. And if we look at the fibrillary IP um, peak, you can see that the peak region co corresponds a very uh, uh, precisely to the box D snow RNA called SNOW 107, and it's downstream polyadenylated RNA sequencing. And we're able to verify the SPAR existence in stem cells, and uh, uh, SPAR 1 contains seven exons, uh, and the spliced acid form is about 35,000 nucleotides. It's really long, long coding RNA. So as we know that most of uh, known uh, Portal transcribed the multiple exon containing RNAs um, are kept by a methyl uh, 7 guardian group at the fibrom N. So, what the mechanism is involved in the formation of the fibrom N of SPAR? So, first of all, we look at our uh, national RNA sequence data uh, to look at how the national SPAR RNA looks like. Now, we found SPAR is transcribed, in fact, from the exact same promoter of the SNOP N. That's to say SPAR1 is processed from the polycystronic transcript of this region. And then we wanted to recapitulate SPAR formation uh, in the extraction vector to study their processing. So here we clone the last two extant of SNP N, uh, the internal sequence, and also the first uh, uh, boxy snow RNA followed by several base pair of SPAR1 and poly tail. And then um, we transfect uh, uh, this plasma into HALA cells, which do not make the endogenous SPAR. We found that this polycytronic pre-RNA can indeed process into upstream mRNA and downstream SPAR1. Now, when we deleted the uh, box CD, SNO RNA, all the chemo tips of it, it completely eliminates SPAR1 formation, while has no effect on the upstream RNA processing. If we replace this endogenous SPAR1 with other SNO RNA, either box CD or HAC, this still forms the SPAR1. So it suggests that this SNO RNA is important and is required for SPAR formation. So now, in order to make the SPAR, it requires the continuous pol 2 transcription after bypass the first uh, poly A uh, uh, signal. Then we wanted to examine um, whether the strength of the poly A would have any effect on the downstream SPAR1 formation. So um, we deleted either uh, the six nucleotides, the um, recognition signal, or together with its auxiliary sequences. Uh, so the bottom line is uh, the weaker of the poly A signal, um, the less processed upstream MR could be detected. And meanwhile, we, uh, correspondingly, we can see the accumulation of pre-RNA and also the uh, increased expression of SPAR1. But if we delete all the poly signals, including the cryptic ones, the um, process of the, upstream, uh, of the upstream MRA almost completely blocked, and uh, the SPAR1 formation also largely uh, diminished. So that's to see this poly A is important for SPAR1 processing, but should not be a very strong one. Uh, for example, if we replace this endogenous poly with a strong poly A signal from beta globin gene, now we can see upstream MR is strongly processed. However, SPAR1 formation is uh, sharply dropped. So it requires a strong, um, so I would say uh, a strong upstream poly A signal can eliminate the SPAR1 formation. Okay. So in order to make the SPAR1, we want to test whether those factors involved in polydenylation and termination also involved in SPAR formation. 
we test this because uh, it's known that the RM partners for termination is functionally connected with cleavage and polydilation in the superman um, processing of RNA. So the key factors we examine here is CPS factors and X, um, XRN2. So we knock down CPS factors uh, followed by the, uh, the RT-PCR to see the accumulation of pre-spar one. So we can tell that this pre-spar is accumulated. And we knock down XRN2, we see the similar thing. Uh, this accumulation of pre-spar one, and here um, it's accumulation of spar one by RNA protection IC. So we think the fibrin and the processing of spar one requires uh, an intact snow RNA, which can be box CD or HACA at the fibrin end, and also a weak upstream poly signal. Uh, in, in addition, the factors involved in cleavage and polydilation and the port two termination also involve in spa formation. Um, I also like to mention that uh, spa processing is associated with a rapid port two elongation rate. So again, we take the advantage of our national R sequence data we've done in PY and HNN cells. We found the, uh, the, trans the elongation rate of these lockers is about 3.4 kb per minute uh, versus on average is about 2.5 kb per minute in the cell. So we think this uh, very fast portal elongation on the one hand can shorten the window of the opportunity for the upstream um, superman formation to occur and on the other hand, it can win the competition with XRN2. So uh, here is uh, the probability signal deletion region. Uh, this is the untranslated region of the protein coding gene. Um, so previously it's saw the UTR of the uh, uh, SNPN, but now we know this is not the case. We have identified many London codons from this region. For the SPA1 processing, we think it's coupled with the rapid portal transcription and a weak upstream poly signal, which allows the incomplete termination of PAL2, uh, which enables the transcription of the downstream SNO RNA gene, which is located 3.4 kb away. Um, when the cleavage happens, XRN2 become associated with the, the uh, cleaved, uh, non-capped uh, national RNA, and XRN2 cleaves uh, the RNA and uh, chases PAL2 wants to destabilize it. However, PAL2 runs fast and reaches the snow RNA first. And then XRN2 meets the co-transitionally assembled snow RNP complex to block the further XRN2 um, uh, trimming. So this is how the fibrin end of SPA1 is formed. And then PAL2 continues its transcription um, to uh, synthesize, uh, well, to initiate the runoff of pol uh, uh, RN polymers to uh, termination, but still it's incomplete, all right? Because there's another spar 2 can be formed downstream of this. So this spar 2 not only can form this link RNA, its intron contains the five snow link RNAs. So this is a very complicated region. Here's the summary, okay? So this is the region uh, deleted in the probability syndrome. Uh, we found a SPAR1 and a SPAR2 right here. And the SPAR2 intron regions also encode 39 copies of SNOW RNA and also five SNOW link RNAs. Okay. These link RNAs, uh, SPAR1 are very long um, from you know, 16,000 or 35,000 nucleotides long, and SNOW link RNAs from 1 kb to 3 kb long. So this is seven new London codons that we found. So now, what do they do in cells? Um, so we found for the spar, if we do RNA in double fish, we found by using the 1 kb long short spar-1 probe, we found spar-1 uh, <coughs> largely localized to the paternal chromosome, which is transcribed, uh, which is, is transcribed uh, site. But if we use um, the tiling anisense probe that can uh, match to the entire SPAR1, SPAR2, and snow link RNAs, we found these RNAs can accumulate to very striking accumulations. Um, they can form uh, this like nuclear spicle uh, with a diameter about one to two um, micrometer in length. And we found somehow snow link RNAs are localized in the middle of the spicle surrounded by the non-overlapping spars. Uh, and as expected, uh, this accumulation also present in 
IPS cells derived from normal population, but not uh, in the IPS cells derived from the PWS patients. Um, we found this London coding RNV associated with multiple RNA binding proteins, including shown here HMPM, TDP43, FOX2, which are known to have a role in neuron degeneration and also uh, involved in multiple aspects of um, uh, RNA metabolism. So to further confirm their uh, association, we did the iClip assay of each individual RNA binding protein, shows you the example of TDP43. For, uh, in our iClip in human ear cells, we found TDP43 binds strongly to this region. And this region, in fact, contains over 350 putative TDP43 binding sites with the GU uh, or UG cluster. Um, and then we generated the um, um, uh, the knockout human ear cell line by using crispr kisna either the maternal KO of this region or paternal KO to mimic uh, the um, patient situation. Um, as expected, maternal KO has no effect on the expression of this London code RNA, so we still find the TB43 band striking into this region, but when these uh, RNAs are absent, no binding could be detected, further suggesting these RNAs and proteins are very specifically interact each other. Um, and importantly, we found that human ear cells lacking the snow link and the spars have altered GP43 binding site. Uh, for example, this gene called agarin, uh, which is important for, I'm getting there, um, for <laughs> the neuron muscular junction formation. And you can tell that it's binding to one of these intron um, is significantly reduced after uh, a depletion of this RNA. And in fact, we found the outer binding sites of the TDB in the absence of these RNAs are located to genes associated with neuron functions. And similar results also observed for HRMPM and FOX2. So uh, here's a summary. Um, uh, about 70% of PWS patients have the deletion of the paternal chromosome, and 25% have uniparental dystomy, and 3% have the um, uh, imprinting defects, all without no expression at all of these RNAs. So we think the mason of these RNAs can have some roles in the development of the Prodibility syndrome. Uh, we all have this link on the beginning of our lives. It forms a spicle attached with those RNA binding proteins. However, if uh, in the patient where all the RNAs are completely gone, we have seen the mislocalization uh, mis of these RNA binding proteins. All right, so the take-home message is we think London code RNAs are very diversified, including, um, this, uh, po uh, RNA well, including the uh, MR look uh, like uh, link RNAs, transcribed from intergenic region, and also a number of non-poly A RNAs. We talk about snow link RNAs, circular RNAs, and also the spa RNA. So with this, I'd like to thank uh, people in my life who worked on all of these RNAs. Uh, Yang is a very talented graduate stu uh, student, so she basically did all of the circular RNA work. Um, Qin Fei worked on snow link RNA, uh, Huang worked on SPAR, and we have uh, one student just joined the lab, Ruman, did those beautiful imaging, and all the computation analysis was in collaboration with Lee's lab at the PSCB, funding came from uh, my institute, and also NSFC, um, uh, the um, ministry, uh, of technology um, and the uh, uh, science and technology of China and China's economy of science. Okay, I'm running out of the time, sorry for that. But thank you for your attention. Are there questions? Oh, oh I, have a, ooh, whoa. <laughs> I have a question about uh, the circular RNAs. And you mentioned that they're abundant in neurons. Have you looked at their localization and possible transport to compartments outside the soma? Because there's a very interesting whole story about messenger RNA transport by zip code and zip code binding proteins of message for local translation. I'm curious if you've looked into that. Mm -hmm. Ourselves, but uh, a group from uh, Germany, they did the, a study as you suggested. So they basically look at the localization of circular RNAs in the neurons, and they found many of them actually accumulate in the neurites. So, uh, but what they do there is still unknown. It's, uh, it's definitely possible they can uh, participate in the transportation and other function as well. Yeah. Is it possible that many of these RNA files are just useless products of transcriptions and processing, but they're resistant to nucleus destruction, so they hang around? 
it's definitely possible. Um, but for our spa uh, per se, we have done uh, like uh, block the portal transcription uh, and uh, deplete all the pre-RNA, but we still see the accumulation of these nuclear spikes. Not really. is a neural specific spliceosomal protein. So that begs the question of whether there's some kind of feedback or autoregulation going on. Yes, um, but there is one existing SNPN knockout animal. Uh, however, a knockout of SNPN cannot basically recapitulate the prader willi syndrome clinical feature. So therefore, um, people in the field have been thinking about that deletion of this non-coding rather than the coding region is more important for the PWS. Yeah. Okay. So last question is Sarah. You know, if, uh, if you look at TDP43 mutations, whether they affect the profile of, your, uh, of the RNA? Mm -hmm. I didn't look at that yet, but I know what you're talking about. So, because there are lots of uh, truncation of TDP43 can end up you know, in the cytoplasmic uh, localization. Um, but so far, we only uh, look at the white type of TDP43 binding pattern in the cell with or without the link RNAs. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you.